Welcome to AP Physics at Lyons Township High School. Today we got an example involving a circuit, and it's one of our circuit puzzles. So um, I have a circuit, it's got 10 resistors in it, uh, label them 1 through 10, uh, some power supply, a voltage that we don't know, and um, you've been given some of the info, all right? So uh, you've been given voltages for a couple items, currents for a couple items, and the resistance of a couple of the items. Um, I've also, for reference, written down the rules of the road that we're going to be using. So we got, in a series circuit, we know the currents are the same in series components. We know the voltages add up, and we know the resistors add up. In parallel, we know the currents add up, the voltages are the same, and you do the 1 over R to get the equivalent resistance for parallel. And then, very important, we got Kirchhoff's two rules. We have the junction rule which says the total current into a junction is the total current out. So for instance, if I have a junction right there and I know five amps comes into it and two amps goes that way, how much current's gotta go that way? Well, hopefully you know it's three amps because they gotta add up. And then the loop rule, which says the total voltage around any closed loop is zero. Okay, so we'll use that near the end of this problem. So what I would suggest, you might wanna go ahead and pause the video here and copy down all the, uh, the info from the picture, the, the picture itself, and this chart with all the, the V's, the I's, and the R's. All right, now you're ready to go. Uh, so in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the rest of the chart, and we're gonna be using these rules. Basically, we'll, we'll probably use almost all of them as we go. Um, notice how the chart's arranged. This is Ohm's law, V equals I times R. So, if you got any two things in a row, you had the third one. I, you, there's like several ways to approach these. I like to start with the currents and draw them in. So for instance, the power supply, it says there's five amps going through that. Now right away, if you look, whatever current goes through R10 is also going through the power supply. I'll draw that as an arrow. Currents, the current is a thing. It's the flow of electrons. So I draw them as arrows going through the components. And uh, that is five amps the whole time. So right away, I've got the current in R10. Um, that is 5 amps, okay? Um, we got a 3 amp current going through R3. Okay, um, can't do much else with that right now. Through R6, we have a 1.875 amp current. So that is there. That's 1.875 amps. Um, and then through, uh, oh, and that's it. Now, uh, there are a couple other currents that we can write in here, okay? And, and maybe you can notice that. For instance, this current right here, just in that little bit of wire right there, what has it got to be? Well, 5 amps goes into here, it splits up, but then that 5 amps comes back together again. So this has to be 5 amps, okay? And then look at this junction. We're, again, we're using Kirchhoff's junction rule. 5 amps goes into that junction. If 1.875 goes this way, how much has to go that way? Well, if you subtract those two, you get your 3.125 amps, okay? Now, um, those don't go in the chart anywhere. Those are, there's not resistors there, but we're gonna use those ideas, okay? So I'm kind of done with the currents. That's all I can do with them. Well, I take that back. There is one more current. You guys see there's one more current we can figure out? Ah, uh, yeah, right here, look at this. Actually, there's a couple more we can figure out. I know that 1.875 amps goes into that junction. It splits up. Some goes that way. Some goes that way. I don't know how much of each yet. But when it gets back down to here, it's going to be 1.875 again, isn't it? 1.875. Aha, I can put that in my chart. That's the current through R9. This is 1.875, okay? And then um, I also know that this current right there has to be the same as that current right there, which is 3.125. And again, those two would add up to five and they go back that way. All right, so um, I can now fill in some voltages or, or some other parts of the chart. So for instance, this voltage here, V equals I times R. So this is going to be 61 and a half, five times 12.3, so 61.5. Um, that's for R10. I'll write that as a little box here, 61.5. I put a voltmeter there, that's what it would read. Uh, this one, if I take three times that, I get uh, 5.625, okay. Um, that's the voltage here. I'll go ahead and write that down, 5.625 volts, okay. Um, 
And that's all the rows I have. So now let's look at voltages, okay? So I got, I know the voltage across R2 is 36 volts right there. Well, all these guys are in parallel, so they all have to have the same voltage. So all three of these voltages are 36 volts. So I'll write that in here and there for R1 and R3. Um, and also looking at R7 and R8, those two guys are in parallel. Oh, by the way, I'll put a little box around these. I know these are the same, see? Um, so R7 and R8 are in parallel, so I know they have to have the same voltage. So I know this voltage is 9.375, and I'll write that in here, 9.375 volts for both of those guys. If I put a voltmeter across either one of them, I'm going to read that. All right, so now um, I can fill in some more values. Uh, so anywhere, any row where I've got two values, I can fill in the third. So like for instance, in row seven here, I know V and I know R, I can find I. I is V over R. If I divide 9.375 divided by 7.5, you get one and a quarter. So this is 1.25 amps. And I'll draw that over here. So this is 1.25 amps. So now I can also know this because these two have to add up to 1.875. So the current through R8 would be 0.625. If I add these two together, I get my 1.875. So this is 0.625. So now um, I know that resistance. V equals I times R. I got that, if I divide V by I, I get R, and if you do that for R8, I get 15. So that's 15 ohms, okay? Now going back up to this little branch right there. Uh, three times, I know this resistance now is 12 ohms, okay? Uh, uh, what times 72 gives you 36? Well, that's 0.5, so this here has to be 0.5 amps, so that's the current through R1. So this has to be 0.5 amps. Aha! Well, I know the current going through here then because these three have to add to 5. So 3 plus 0.5, this has to be 1.5 amps. So the current through R2 has to be 1.5 amps. Therefore, if I do this divided by that, you're going to get uh, 24 ohms. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. Um, let's see, R4 and R5, they're in parallel. So they each have to have the same voltage. So this voltage here has to be 22 and a half as well. I'll put a little box there, 22 and a half volts. They have the same voltage. Um, so now I can figure out the current through R4. Um, v equals I times R. So I take 22 and a half divided by 12. You get 1.875. So this is 1.875. That's the current through R4, so I'll draw that right there. That's 1.875. This has to be the rest of that current. We got a junction right there. If 3.125 goes in, then 3.125's got to come out. If I subtract that from that, for R5, that gives me one and a quarter. So this is 1.25 amps. I'll put that right there. And then um, for that resistance value, V equals IR, you take 22 and a half divided by 1.25, you're going to get 18 ohms, okay? Uh, let's see, we got R6. Um, I don't know about that one yet. Okay, so let's see here. What do we got left? We've got R6, okay, whose current we know, and then we've got um, the power supply. We don't know its voltage. And then the resistance, this is not the resistance of the power supply. This is the total resistance of your circuit, okay? So how do you do this? Well, um, let's see here. There's, you've got two, two options to figure out either a voltage or the resistance of R6, okay? Um, oh, let's see here. Which would be easier to do? Uh, Let's see here. What would be easiest to do? I've got the current. Um, goodness, All right, we're stuck here, aren't we? We don't know R, R6, nope. And we don't know V yet, okay. Um, okay, oh, well, 
here's an option. Okay, now this, is, this is a little tricky. The voltage for this branch is 22 and a half. If you start here and end here, you lose 22 and a half volts. Well, if you go this way, you're also going to have to lose a total of 22 and a half volts. If you're Joe Electron, if you start here and you end here, you have to lose the same amount of voltage. So um, if we lose 22 and a half volts this way, we have to also lose 22 and a half volts that way. Well, um, so this voltage plus this plus this has got to be 22 and a half. So if you take 22 and a half minus that and then minus that, uh, that's going to give you four. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 7.5. So this voltage here is 7.5 volts. And then now that we know the voltage and we know uh, the current, now we can calculate the resistance, V equals IR. If you do V equals IR for the, six ohm, or the R6, you get a 4 ohm resistance. Ah, okay, that was a tough one. Now, um, and by the way, a quick note. If you get stuck, okay, usually the best way out of it is to look for voltages. You know voltages from one point to another have to be the same no matter what route you take. It's part of... Kirchhoff's loop rule, okay? If you start and stop at the same point, your drop in voltage will be the same. Now, for the power supply, um, I don't know V and I don't know REQ. Now, by the way, a, a common misconception is, oh, to find the total resistance of your circuit, you just add up all your resistors. No, no, all right? The, some of these are in parallel, some are in series, and they're all kind of different arrangements, so you don't just add them up, you can't do that. We're gonna find the total voltage, okay? And we're gonna use Kirchhoff's loop rule to do that. So I'm going to start here, okay, and I'm going to do one complete lap around my circuit. And the total voltage around that lap has to be zero. So I'm going to up just a tad. So if I start here, well, and I'll go, I'll go this way, okay, um, with the currents. So um, I go through the power supply, which is some voltage V, which I'm trying to find, I don't know, okay. Everywhere else, I'm going to lose voltage. I'm going with the current through resistors. I'm losing voltage. So uh, let's say I choose to go through R3. I lose 36 volts. And then I'll go, you can pick any way you want. I'll go down, and I'll go through R4, in which case I lose 22 and a half volts. OK, and then I get to here, and then I turn right, and then I'm going to lose 61.5 volts. OK, and then I'm back to where I started. So the total voltage around a closed loop has to be zero. All right, so really easy to solve for V. It's just this plus this plus this. If you add those up, it turns out you get 120 volts, okay? And now the total resistance on my circuit would be 120 divided by five, which I believe is 24. So the, the REQ of your circuit is 24 ohms. Now on a side note, you could have found REQ by you know, putting these together in parallel, putting these together in parallel, putting these three together in series, putting all that in parallel with this, getting one resistor, putting these three together in one, then putting these three in series. But that's a lot of extra work that, frankly, I wouldn't want to do. So um, you don't have to do it that way. Um, again, if you get stuck, you probably need to use Kirchhoff's loop rule. The total voltage around a loop is zero. So um, I hope that example was helpful. And uh, even, even I, now and then have to pause for a second to think about, well, like for instance, that guy right there, it took me a minute to think about, well, what do I know about him? So um, that happens to everybody. So anyway, I hope that uh, example was helpful and, uh, and thank you very much.